As we grow up and get older, our bodies begin to change. Sometimes those changes can be a bit uncomfortable or even bizarre. We feel strange pains in new places. We grow seemingly a foot in height overnight. Hair sprouts up in new places and falls out of other places. Whether it's puberty or just the aging process, it seems like the human body never runs out of ways to surprise us. But those surprises are completely normal and to be expected as part of being alive. Unless you're one particular young man whose body changed overnight into something unrecognizable and entirely anomalous. That's when a very special individual we'll be calling Matt Terra comes in. Matt was an ordinary 24-year-old man, with nothing particularly interesting about him. Sure, he was a nice guy, he was smart, he was great at chess and video games, and had an impressive memory for science trivia, but there was nothing unusual about him. Every day he would get up, go to work at a board game and comic book store, chat with his co-workers and make a few sales, head home, make dinner, relax, and go to bed ready to do it all again the next day. It wasn't a glamorous life or that exciting, but it was a pleasant life, and he was happy to live it. One night Matt was having a difficult time sleeping. He was tossing and turning, waking up every few minutes to a dull, aching feeling in his stomach. He didn't feel feverish or sick, and the pain wasn't sharp or indicative of an emergency, so he shrugged it off as indigestion and tried to get back to sleep. We've all been there, right? Eventually, he nodded off all the way. He woke up the next morning blurry-eyed and exhausted from the rough night, but feeling otherwise fine. He climbed out of bed, stretched, and headed to the bathroom to brush his teeth. There in the mirror, he saw something that made him think he might still be dreaming. He pinched himself and found that he was indeed awake. While he was sleeping, somehow his body had changed into something completely impossible. Where his stomach had once been, there was a blue, green, and brown orb that reminded him of a photograph he had once seen. A picture of Earth, taken aboard the International Space Station. After calling into work and explaining in a stammering voice that he would not be coming in that day, Matt did the only thing he could think of. He went to the hospital. Of course, the doctors had no idea what to do with him. It wasn't like they could just take out his appendix or give him an antibiotic. None of them had ever seen anything like this before. Fortunately for him, one doctor knew a lot more than he was letting on. Matt wouldn't be the first human to develop bizarre anomalous traits and then stagger into a nearby hospital for treatment. That's why the SCP Foundation has agents embedded in major hospitals all across the world. And one such doctor was the man treating Matt. On the downside, he wouldn't be enjoying his freedom much longer. On the upside, it'd cost a hell of a lot less than a regular uninsured hospital visit. So the field agent called up his superiors, wiped Matt's record from the hospital, and soon after a group of Foundation agents came to collect the confused, unfortunate host of what soon would be known as SCP-007. SCP-007 is found within an abdominal cavity on the body of Matt, also referred to as the subject just below his ribcage where his stomach would be. Most of his abdomen is completely missing, including the muscles, skin, and organs that should ordinarily be necessary for his survival. However, he does not appear to experience any pain or even discomfort from his condition. SCP-007 itself is a spherical planet composed of soil and water, none of which actually touches any part of his body. The planet resembles a miniature duplicate of Earth, about 60 centimeters in diameter, with its own weather patterns and gravitational pull, neither of which appear to have any effect on the subject, nor do they seem to be affected by his movements or behavior. There are also a variety of tiny organisms dwelling on the planet's surface that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Though it greatly resembles Earth, there are some notable differences. Obviously, instead of floating in space and revolving around the sun, this planet does not appear to have an orbit. It is uncertain where the organisms on the planet get their light from though it does not seem to be our sun, since the organisms have not shown any negative effects from the lack of sunlight and presence of artificial light in the Foundation's site. There are continents visible on the planet's surface, surrounded by its sea, but they do not resemble a continental alignment that can be traced to any point in our Earth's history. As far for the life on the small planet, 
the organisms navigating the surface of the world inside Matt's abdomen. There are dozens of identifiable species that bear a passing resemblance to creatures on Earth. There are blue, cow-like livestock, species of bird that appear to have scales, red and orange trees, and other plant life, and two intelligent species that are notably and significantly humanoid in appearance and behavior. Observation of these intelligent species via microscope and digital imaging has revealed that they operate in societies and are consistently developing and improving their technology. Though their technology was incredibly rudimentary when Matt was first brought into containment, resembling early nomadic human civilizations, it has progressed to the level of 15th century humanity. The research team assigned to SCP-007 has noticed the recent introduction of a version of the printing press, used to produce what appear to be pamphlets and even entire books. The language these books are printed in is unrecognizable, and so the contents of these materials are currently unknown. But the citizens of the planet clearly have a grasp of the written word and both the technology and the desire to share it amongst themselves. They have also developed an agricultural system. Their farms have progressed to the point of using new innovations such as windmills, used to mill grain, wheelbarrows used to transport crops and other supplies, and the practice of crop rotation. Unfortunately, with these positive developments comes the ability to escalate conflicts and wage wars. They look to have created parachutes, gunpowder, and other explosives, and their own versions of the muzzle-loaded rifle. However, in spite of the ugliness of battle, there is beauty too. The people of the planet have created new ways to express themselves, with what can only be described as new instruments closely resembling the piano, the mandolin, and the bagpipes. As exciting and even moving as it can be to watch these tiny beings grow and change, building their own miniature society, it is also a bit troubling. As these people continue to progress at such a fast rate, it stands to reason that they will eventually catch up to us, or even surpass us in terms of technology. The research team has not yet made any attempts to communicate with the inhabitants of the abdominal planet, concerned about influencing the developments of its societies in any way, or compromising their ability to observe them without interfering, but they may not be able to keep this up for much longer. What will happen if these tiny beings continue to follow in our footsteps and create their very own space programs? If they leave their planet's atmosphere, they will discover the truth that their world is buried in the abdomen of what is, to them, a giant man. That reality would be enough to shatter the sanity of many of us, and it would likely cause chaos on their world. There has been a great deal of debate amongst the research team about what to do if this should happen. Some insist that the team should continue to passively observe until the issue comes up, while others believe that they should attempt to make contact with the inhabitants of the planet in order to soften the eventual blow to their perceptions when they attempt space exploration. Currently, the debate rages on, as the research team keeps an eye on the progression of the little civilizations. Hopefully, if they do eventually make contact, they will find a way to make it clear that we come in peace. So, who is Matt Terra, the subject? He is a highly intelligent young man, with a shockingly casual attitude towards his body's anomalous properties. When asked about the planet, he simply says, I just woke up one day and there it was. I don't have any idea how it got there. Testing revealed that he is genetically human, and there is nothing unusual or even notable about the rest of his body. He provided his name willingly upon arriving at the SCP Foundation, but no one of his name and age has ever lived in his hometown area according to public records. To verify his identity, he was able to produce a social security card and a driver's license, which did not appear to be forged or altered in any way. However, when the numbers were run through the system, there was no match. Officially, this man does not exist. It is not entirely certain where he came from or why there is no record of him. But one researcher posited that he somehow crossed over from a parallel dimension or that the presence of his abdominal planet added as a kind of cognitohazardous effect to him that erased all perception of him from any records. Whatever the case may be, wherever he came from, he is here now. Because he has not yet attempted escape or even shown a desire to leave the Foundation's site, there are no strict containment procedures in place. The only active containment procedures for SCP-007 are for the subject's safety and security. He lives in a sealed room with furniture and other items, 
which are granted upon request as long as they do not pose a security risk. The subject's room includes an easy chair, a bed, a beanbag chair, a television with access to several movie and television streaming services, a number of video game consoles, an espresso machine, a microwave, a refrigerator, an exercise bike, and a bookshelf filled with books and graphic novels. Though he does not appear to require food or water in order to survive, he enjoys consuming both food and drinks, and is especially fond of coffee, sodas, grape juice, sour cream and onion potato chips, mangoes, and the occasional treat of Chinese takeout, mm -hmm. an opinion which he shares with the eccentric Dr. Clef. The head researcher assigned to SCP-007, Dr. Cho, has a weekly game of chess with Matt, during which he evaluates the subject's mental health and general emotional well-being. Over the course of these games, the two have developed a friendly relationship, with each man winning about half of the time. Matt asks about Dr. Cho's family, and in return, Dr. Cho checks in about his containment situation, seeing if there's anything the Foundation can provide to make his time with them more comfortable. Most recently, Matt requested a computer with an internet connection, mainly so that he could play his video games in online co-op mode, but this request was denied out of a concern that it would compromise Foundation security. Sympathetic to his desire for company, Dr. Cho has begun to allow the subject to have visits with SCP-507, who will stop by his containment facility during his inactive periods for a movie night or some video games. Matt has described 507 as his best friend, aside from Dr. Cho. In spite of the intricate world inexplicably floating in his body, the subject leads a relatively simple life. He does not seem to be restless or resentful at all. In fact, he seems largely content. Though his future is uncertain, and he is living through a completely unprecedented anomalous experience, he is probably one of the happiest anomalies contained at the SCP Foundation, and definitely one of the most at peace with his anomalous status. Whatever happens next for him, he will probably be ready for it with a smile, and there's something we can all learn from that. Now go check out SCP-662 Butler's Handbell and SCP-507 Reluctant Dimension Hopper for more unusual but harmless humanoid SCPs.